Ian Troop. I'm a fly fishing guide, instructor, and competitive angler. I'm going to tie one of my favorite patterns for difficult fish, a fly called the plume tip. Go for it. All right, so I'm going to tie one of my, uh, another one of my go-to dry flies. Simple fly, really, really good fly for difficult trout. Uh, it's a Jeremy Lucas pattern. So Jeremy Lucas is a great dry fly angler from the UK, and he's whittled his selection down to almost being the, one of the only dry flies you need. Uh, that's a pretty big absolute statement, but he's not far off. Uh, this is a pattern you definitely tie smaller. So I've got a 14, 130BL dry fly hook from Hannock. That would be the max size. This really does excel in 16s, 18s, even 20s. Don't be afraid to go small. This is a great pattern um, when, you know, those difficult trout, you see a trout kind of sipping in, in slower water or you just, you, you know, you're having trouble figuring out what they're using, float a, flu, a plume tip over them. In a lot of situations, it'll work. So pretty simple fly. So black thread. Uh, the original was tied uh, with uh, heron. I believe, which is something we're not going to use here. So, uh, you know, Jeremy Lucas is quoted as saying he would feel just as comfortable fishing a pheasant tail version. And I have fished the pheasant tail when it works just as well. So here we're going to use is a, this is a pheasant tail that's nearing its end. So uh, I'm going to push my limits here on this one, but you know, grab a, a, a thicker strand if you can. Um, and so, what we're going to do is use that to wrap up the hook and then we're just going to put a, a plume on the top. So it's not too difficult a pattern to, to material. So grab about, I don't know, three or four strands max. I'm going to grab four. Um, you definitely don't need more than that. We're going to tie them in from the tips. So I recommend just trimming them off. Just, we're just, we're just even, evening them out. So I'm going to catch that in. And we're going to run our thread down just to where it actually starts to bend. So right about there. We're going to come back up and we're going to park our thread about, oh, I don't know what that is. Leave about a quarter, maybe a little bit less. Leave room at the top. You don't want to crowd the head on this one. So um, what I like to do with this one is put a little bit of glue on here. You could also wrap it around the thread. If you watch another video I do with pheasant tail, you could wrap around the thread and bring it up for extra durability. Different ways you could do it. So I'm gonna just wrap this, this one up. But I put the glue base, which works really, really well. Another version, spin it onto the thread. I suggest you'll see another video where I do a, a pheasant tail nymph. You could do that version as well for more durability, your choice. Another way I could do it is just spinning it like this. So we're gonna go up to about there. Uh, that glue makes it a much more durable fly. The reason I do two different versions on this one is I just don't pound it as much. I find it's a more of a gentle fly. It's gonna wear out with the CDC, whereas my pheasant tail nymph tends to have a longer lifespan. All right, so you can see I've built up a pheasant tail body. Now the CDC portion, this is where something you're going to want a really quality CDC. So I'm going to grab two feathers, lay them on top of each other because it's a 14. If, if you read anything with Jeremy Lucas, he goes really sparse on these. He likes one feather almost for everything. I like two. You could even go three if you wanted more floatability. But what I'm doing is I'm stacking like this and I'm grabbing as many of those fibers as I can. The reason it's called a plume tip is we're using the tip of the plume. And so what we're gonna do is go for about length of the hook. Um, I tend to like these a little bit on the long side. So think about it, it's gonna be sticking out of the water. If you go, you're just kind of losing fibers. I don't find there's any reason to go super short, but keep it within the realm of reasonability. So a little bit longer than, or just the length of the hook. So you can see I've caught it in like this. Okay, pull it back. Couple under there. So the real secret of this fly is the angle of the plume tip. So take your scissors, angle it. So I've made a little bit of a hump there. Clean that up. Some people leave that. I just clean it up. So I like to put a little bit of dubbing around it. But what you want is you can see it's coming off almost on a 
so close to a 45 or a bit of an angle. You don't want it straight out. You actually want to pull this back. That's thus we left the room there. So you want it to sit. So when it's sitting in the water, it's going to be sitting like that. And you can see that angle. That's the angle that we're looking for. We're not looking for it straight down. It's not a pure shuttlecock or anything like that. So just pay attention to that angle. Now you could dub something behind here. You could leave it. I use the spent part of the CDC. You could also put hair's ear in there. So here's the parts we used. Just grab a couple of those. Gives you some bugginess, gives it some flex floatability. Um, so just grab it, dub it on there. Nothing fancy. Dub it in. Built up a bit. Well, it's a bit white, but life will go on. It's probably a bit much. Okay, a couple wraps in the front. We'll grab a little brush here, brush it out. If you want to give it, give those legs out a bit. I don't think the legs make all the difference in the world, but it does make it look really, really nice. But you can see you get this nice leggy, buggy fly. And then what I like to do just for me is I tilt it up just to tie off. All I'm doing is putting a little super glue on there, lock it in. I mean, it's up to you. You can do a double whip finish. You can do a single if you want to risk it. But I guess what I'm doing is just keeping a little bit in front of the head there. And then a couple of half hitches is probably all you need when you've got glue in there. So there you have it. A deadly pattern and in small sizes will catch very difficult trout. Great pattern for flat water when you see those rising fish. And again, don't be afraid to tie this fly small.